Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Technology Mafia. Now for most of my videos, when I say most, for 95% of my videos, I use the Sony SEL35 f1.8. That is a $400 lens. It is a fixed prime f1.8 lens. Now you don't have to spend $400 to get a f1.8 lens or even better. In fact, you could go out and buy this lens, which is the CCTV 35 millimeter f 1.7 lens and believe it or not this small lens is only $30 let's check out what comes in the box okay so the box that this lens comes in is very very compact right here CCTV lens which stands for closed circuit TV because this lens as you may or may not know is from a security camera and it's just been adapted to various different applications recently. So pretty simple packaging. Instructions. Lens comes wrapped in this bag. Around the back there are no electronic connections because this is a manual only focus lens. This piece is fixed because this is the e-mount version of the lens. You can purchase this lens for a little bit less money uh, and if you want the one that comes with an adapter that you screw onto the back and then mount to your A6000. No rear lens cap but that's okay. The front lens cap is about the cheapest lens cap I've ever seen. It is not even straight. It looks like a uh, bottle cap that's been repurposed. Very cheap. And here is the lens. So this is the focusing ring. So it's pretty smooth right here. And then as you get to one extreme, it's a little crunchy. Photosy F35. 1.7 on the top. Interestingly, the inner barrel moves as you focus. And then the aperture is declicked. See if we can, yeah. All the way closed. And then F1.7. So let's put this on the A6000 and see what it looks like. Here is the lens mounted on my A6000 and it looks kind of funny because, well, the lens looks very small, but it fits. I would say that the fitment is probably one of the poorest that I've seen for an E-mount lens. It definitely wiggles and you can hear it moving side to side, but it is still usable. The aperture ring is pretty smooth when it's mounted. The problem that I found is when you use the focus ring, it's pretty easy to knock the aperture ring at the same time because it's such a small area, but it works. There it is on the camera. All right, so let's go ahead and check out what you could do with this cheap lens.
So those are the sample images and video that I took using this lens. What's interesting is that when you are manually focusing this lens as you have to, I have focus peaking enabled on my A6000, so I see a red outline of what is in focus and what isn't in focus. The focal plane on this lens is not flat as it is with most lenses. It will tend to, almost in a sphere-like manner, focus in the center and then move to the outer edges. And you could see that in the video footage, hopefully. There's quite a bit of distortion on the outside edges of the lens. Now you don't really notice this as much when you are taking portraits because the center of the lens is sharp and in focus and then the outside, the background is just blurred because it's bokeh and then the edges are just distorted. But you do notice it when you stop the lens down a bit and you're trying to do a landscape shot, for example, and you're trying to get the full image in focus. It's very difficult. You almost have to settle between getting the majority of the center in focus or getting just the edges in focus. Now, a lot of people are not going to see that as a negative because the fact that it has that circular distortion on the edges is kind of an interesting characteristic. So some people will think that it's artsy slash creative. So it's a plus and a minus. Obviously, you're not going to use this lens to do professional wedding photography. You're not going to go out and charge a client $2,000 to do a photo shoot with this lens. But it is kind of an interesting lens to throw in your bag if you wanted to, uh, to take it out and take some shots that have some crazy distortion on the edges. For $30, I thought that it would be much worse than it is. So should you go out and buy this lens? Well, it depends on whether or not you're looking for a particular look in your photos. If you're looking for that distortion, go out and spend the $30 and you'll probably enjoy taking pictures with it. Also, if this is your first prime lens that's all manual and you're just wondering if you will be able to shoot using a manual lens, maybe you should go out and spend the $30, get this lens, try it out before investing two or $300 into a manual lens. For the majority of you though, I would say stick with either the Sigma 30mm f1.4 or the Sony 35 f1.8. Uh, those are two of my favorite lenses that are primes. All right, so that is it for this video. That is it for this lens. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, be sure to hit that like button below. Subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. And I am going to give this lens away to the first person that writes first one ST down in the comment section below. If you are the first person to type first down below in the comments, uh, I will select you as the winner and then I'll get your address and send this lens out to you. So thank you guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.